So, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Brighton Jane, for those who don't know me yet. Um, I'm a student here at, uh, or a student, I'm uh, doing my internship momentarily at UNITER. And uh, for my project, I, well, um, I'm organizing this uh, virtual exchange between students of the Netherlands and also students from Mexico. This is to make it, uh, to motivate, to have an interaction with each other, to get to know each other and make, the, uh, make it more accessible for more students to participate with the inter internationalization. Um, today, we are accompanied by uh, some students from Mexico here at UNITA and also with uh, Menno from my university in the Netherlands. Um, first of all, we're gonna start with, uh, maybe if you're ready, Menno, you can introduce yourself very shortly, and then you can start with your presentation as well. Yes, of course. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Menno. I'm 23 years old, uh, coming from the Netherlands. And uh, just as Brighton said, I'm a student from uh, Hogeschool Rotterdam. And I would like to inform you guys more about uh, about our country. Yes. Are you able? You're able to present, uh, share your screen, right? I will give it a try. I don't know which one it exactly is, but. Is it maybe possible if I would send the the presentation to you? Brian? Yes, sure. Then yes. Uh, you will hear it when you can go to the next. Uh... Okay, no problem. Okay, because sharing is not available right now. Okay, no problem. You can send to wait. Um, give me two seconds, and I will share with you my. You know, so you can send it to me then. You can send it to me and then I will, I will share it. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. Give me one second. Sorry, guys, but oh. uh, I'll send it to, uh, I'll send it to your mm -hmm. uh, middle school, right? Yes, at one school as well. Mm. Ah, sí. uh, in the meantime, I will, yes, okay. In the meantime, I will introduce the other students as well. We have Valeria, uh, Karen, and Anna Karen, all students here at Unite. And we're also joined by uh, Professor Julia. She's a uh, professor in, from Okanagan College in Canada, and is also very much involved in the internationalization here at Oninte. So she is joined uh, you today as well. And also uh, Omar from, and also from uh, director of internationalization here at Oninte, who is following uh, the presentation or the exchange as well. Give me one second to open. You've received it. Yes, I got it here. I did receive it, yes. It's downloading now. I to download and then I will share it for you guys. Amanda, you are also coming to uh, Uninter next semester, right? Yes, that's true. 
Um, I'll tell, I will introduce myself. Uh, during okay, the perfect. It's a good moment for you to get to know some of the students as well. And Everything still works, Bryson? Yes, it's the PowerPoint is opening right now. Yes, here we go. All right, let me share. You guys can see the screen. Yes, you could put it on the first. Yes. Here we go. Yes. Okay. Can I start? Yes, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, hello, guys. Um, again, my name is Menno. I'm 23 years old and I'm from the Netherlands. And I'm going to be on exchange in Mexico uh, in the beginning of August. Uh, but for now, I would like to inform you guys about our country and see if you already knew, knew some things. But uh, I would uh, hopefully impress you guys and yeah let's give it a go um Bryson, could you please yes okay um let's start off with the culture uh, but i mean like the, the netherlands is very well known uh, from this culture at uh, the dutch art uh, van gogh and uh, rembrandt museum um maybe you have heard of it uh here in the Netherlands, a lot of people like culture, uh, like the art, and you could easily give it a go and visit uh, a museum. And next to that, uh, the Netherlands are very well known about the wooden shoes, the tulips and windmills, uh, because of, of the Netherlands is an, uh, a country where uh, is a lot of water and we are living in below sea level. Um, you see this uh, a lot, like, just like windmills and in addition to that, I would like uh, Brighton to go to the next page. Uh, and then I want to talk about my school, um, the same as Brighton. Uh, we are almost, uh, we're currently uh, following the same education. And it's on uh, Hoogs Rotterdam. And like it said, it's in Rotterdam, it's a very big school. And uh, I have my lessons there. I'm a year three student. Um, next to that, I have like uh, 12, uh, ed, uh, 12 fucker, uh, right? Classes, yeah, or lectures. Oh, yeah, like 12, 12 classes in a year, which is four classes uh, or two classes each month. I would say no, each four or four weeks, I have two classes and then uh, I still have my project. And my project is based on uh, companies which are around Rotterdam. Uh, which is really fun uh, that you are talking with companies and uh, you having you having like a connection and they could help you. And right now, uh, Hoogs Rotterdam is one of the biggest in the Netherlands. And I um, cannot wait also to go to Mexico um, and that you guys also can show me more about it. Uh, Brighton, could you give it a go? Yes, if I can add something real quick about uh, the education yes. as well. Yes, if um, other students have questions, 
go ahead. Yes. So it's the education is kind of uh, divided into three parts. You have the the theory, um, which you have uh, your classes, and then you have an exam at the end of the semester. Two exams actually. You have the one in the middle, and then one at the end. And then you also have the more practical part, is which you're doing a, a project with uh, most of the times with a Dutch company. Um, and then for a month long, you have to help them. So we are studying uh, a marketing, we're both doing marketing. And then you have to prepare like a, a plan or help the company improve their, their businesses, right? So we have that, I think it's two times a year. You have, you work with a company then, and then in the end you present with them as well. And the good thing about it is you get like to have a real in real life, uh, real in the world uh, um, uh, working with the, with those companies, right? You get a bit of the experience of how they work and how they do their businesses. And when you're done with your education, of course, you already have worked with a bunch of companies and, and you know how they work and do, do business in the Netherlands. And you also have a, a part as a, a student focus. So your own your own development kind of where you work on projects but more on on yourself and you can choose your own uh, lectures are not specifically um specifically towards your study you can do something different for example you can do languages you can do something with design or with computing and to grow do your own uh, personal development so that's kind of how the three parts of our education is is divided into yes um, thanks for the information. Uh, yes. um, just like you said, there are uh, three projects in a year and it's also very uh, good for your own development that you're going to connect with people who are already in the, in the business life and it could easily uh, help you and they would inform you already about their work and yeah, it's good for your knowledge as well. Okay, uh, living in the Netherlands. Um, first of all, um, uh, my own experience about living in the Netherlands. Um, right now, um, yeah, living in the Netherlands is perfect. I think it's a country which I love, uh, except the weather, because that's horrific. Uh, the weather is not so nice, but yeah, the, the, the people are uh, very kind and uh, yeah, they would always uh, help you in my opinion and uh, next to that uh, the living cost uh, living in the Netherlands is um, yeah in a certain way um, very uh, expensive let's say that for um, uh, much of renting renting here in the Netherlands uh, is costing a lot of money um, and in the supermarkets the, um, the prices are going up right now because of the war uh, in Ukraine uh, we feel that but uh, still about the living cost it's yeah kind of expensive um, next to that if you are having work here you could um, is, you could pay that and the transportation I think the transportation in the cities are um, are um, how to say Brighton what do you think about the um, I mean it's very especially in Rotterdam because it's one of the biggest cities we do have a lot of options. Uh, you can take the bus, for example. Yeah. Uh, we do have the tram and the metro. So tram is kind of like a metro, but it's uh, more on land and they do shorter stops. You also have the metro, which is like the underground, the underground metro. Um, and also we have trains that are connected between within the between cities. So if you want to go from Rotterdam to Amsterdam, for example, you take the train. But within the cities, you have buses, uh, the tram, and the metro. And also, the Netherlands is very known for its bikes. Everyone has, um, I will close to everyone has a bike, I, I, I would assume. And you can uh, ride around your bike and, and get to anywhere basically very, very, uh, very fast. So those yeah. are the means of getting around the city. Yes, and if you compare it to Mexico, I think uh, the Netherlands is not that big if you want to you want to travel from city to city um you are most likely not uh, with the transportation with the train not longer than two hours yeah and yeah like my brighton mentioned um bikes you must get used to that here in the netherlands a lot of people do bike um 
So uh, going on to the next topic is going out. I mean, um, like the, how, how about the going out Brighton? Um, the Netherlands is pretty known for its festivals and concerts and stuff like that. Um, we have also something called the Vrijmibo, Vrijdag Middag Borrel, <laughs> where we go out on, on Friday after work. Yeah, you, most of the times you go with your, your friends or with your colleagues. You yeah. go out after on a Friday, have a, have a few drinks, and then and then you go out at night. Mm -hmm. um, but for students, it's it's especially Rotterdam is considered a student a student city. Um, uh, we have a lot of students from almost everywhere around the world. It's a very um, international international city, yes. So you get people from from almost everywhere in Rotterdam, which makes it a very lively city to to live in. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of options of going out, having fun. True, and um, the student life also. Uh, I, I think yeah. as a student, you can easily meet up with new people. Uh, they are always open, uh, like Brighton said. Uh, loads of internationals, um, and they always yeah. Because if you're new here, I think you could uh, meet up very easily. And then if you could please go to the next page. Um, then we talk about what we just <laughs> what we just talk about <laughs> festivities. Uh, King's Day that is the day that the, that the, the, the king is birthday. Um, not that we um, all care because it's a big party. <laughs> then we are all uh, uh, we are all dressed in orange. Uh, uh, festivals are also in the Netherlands, like Hoo-ha, Pinkpop, Pink Pop, but also Techno, I think uh, very big festivals in the Netherlands, uh, where also a lot of internationals are coming to. Uh, next to that is Carnival, this is a, a party oh. Oh. Uh, from uh, a region, Brabant and Sinterklaas, yeah, um, uh, like Santa Claus, right? Sinterklaas. Yeah, it's uh, very similar. With like um, yeah, it's... Uh been kind of controversial last few years but that's something they're kind of trying to change but it's kind of like santa claus where someone uh this bearded guy with uh dressed in red comes and gives uh, kids presents um, about king's day it's it's funny because um so the netherlands we have a, a monarchy of course we have a king and a queen with princesses um fun fact the queen of the netherlands comes from argentina Yes. It's uh, the king has, I think, lived there for a few years and then met uh, Queen Maxima, who's come from Argent who comes from Argentina. And they have uh, three princesses together. Um, in the Netherlands, we have, a, as, as I said, we have a monarchy, um, a king and a queen, but they don't do much of the decision making. They're only there kind of for, for the image, I guess, or to, you know, kind of represent the country. And then once a year, we have... a. Uh, uh, we celebrate his birthday, King's Day, and then everyone dresses in orange, which is the national color of the Netherlands. Yeah. And then we go out, we have festivals, we have parties, people come together with their families, and it's a, a day full of uh, festivities. And yeah, those are some of the big, big festivals or festivities we have in the Netherlands that yeah. are kind of part of our, our culture, you know? Party in the Netherlands festivities are one of the best. Uh, but let's see. okay, right, please, please go. Uh, snacks, okay, let's, guys, let's not forget about the snacks. I mean, the cheese, um, well, uh, I think every Dutch person loves the cheese here. Uh, we also have stroopwafels. Please remember that one, stroopwafels. Um, Poffertjes, kapsalon, it's like a meal. Um, please give it a try and Hopefully, because of this next, you will remain longer in the Netherlands. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, if you if you want to say anything else. Oh, no, I just want to say that uh, I think the Netherlands is also one of the biggest exporters of cheese. It is. Or yes, a, it is. yes, we have uh, a very, very big variety of types of cheeses. Uh, Gouda cheeses. I think we also have that one here in Mexico, which they sell a lot. You have the Oaxaca cheese, which is Mexican, of course, and the Machego as well, I think. And then next to that, you also in the large supermarkets, so you find the, the Gouda cheese as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the, the main Dutch snacks and foods that we have there. 
I don't think I don't think we have to express too much about it. They have to to taste <laughs> by themselves, and they know. <laughs> okay, um, let's give it a try again. Okay, the place, places to visit, yeah, the big cities: Rotterdam, Amsterdam, The Hague for the government. Uh, like Brighton said, the uh, the Queen and the King are not making the, the, the decisions. It's the government, which is located in uh, Den Haag. And next to that, Amsterdam has a lot of touristic places. I have lived there for a couple of months, uh, which I recommend you guys to, to give it a go or to go to Amsterdam. Um, yeah, the nightlife. Um, and also in the Netherlands are a lot of small villages. And personally, I think they offer no additional value. Um, it's better to go to the big cities where a lot of things are happening. Yeah, that's also part of the... The confusion with the name we have a lot here. Um, a lot of people think that the Netherlands is called uh, Holland or here's a Hollanda. Um, but Holland is actually the two provinces which are which have the biggest cities, uh, North and South Holland. And those are mostly the places where most tourists go to. Um, you can visit the other provinces as well, but they are not um that much going there i mean there are cool places to visit and cool attractions uh, but for the biggest or most well-known places you go to the north or south of holland and in those provinces you have rotterdam amsterdam uh, the hague as well which yeah. are the more frequently visited places and like already mentioned if you are, want to go from rotterdam to amsterdam maybe with the train is only 40 minutes so yeah exactly easy, you could easily be there in a in a short time yes um if you give it a go yeah um last slide uh i think for you guys it's important uh, to share some information and some tips um uh, the first one is the Dutch social customs. Um, Dutch, piece, uh, Dutch persons are really open and friendly, uh, but at the same time, they are could be very direct and functional. And with direct is more likely that if you're uh, talking with a Dutch guy and then he could easily say what he's thinking. This has nothing to do against you, but this is just the way how they are. Um, this is just their what they're thinking, they're telling you. And don't be offended because it's the lifestyle here. Um, next to that, being friendly and speak some Dutch words are always helpful um, because not a lot of uh, people know some Dutch words and they are surprised. And that is what they appreciate. Next to that, the weather is changing every day. I can tell you this morning, uh, the sun was shining and now it's raining. And tonight it could be snowing, for example. It's, it's not normal. So if you are going to the Netherlands, please think about your clothes. Um, it, could, it could change every minute. Um, also the bike paths, like the transportation, you have loads and loads of loads of bike paths here. Please give it a try. Uh, maybe if you come here, uh, the, the bikes are uh, well used. And if you are coming to the Netherlands, the credit cards, that is not very, not used very much, right, Brighton? Yeah, we don't. Um, so in the Netherlands, we have something called uh, Pass or your, your debit card, which is mostly used. Yeah, I do. And we also have, uh, now with the technology, you can also pay with, uh, with Apple Pay or with your phone. Yeah. Um, but credit cards are not very much used compared to... So from my experience here in Mexico, we do have to use, you can, a tip for you as well, Meno. Um, I know, I know yes. that's why I said it. <laughs> yes. I know, I'm not even there, I don't really know. <laughs> so for us, it's very important to use our credit cards because you cannot, or in most places, we cannot use our, our debit cards here in Mexico. Um, so that is a, a big difference in how we use uh, our cards uh, abroad. Thank you, Brighton. So yes. For for now, uh, this was my presentation about the Netherlands. I hope it was helpful and informed you about uh, yeah about our country. Yes, thank you very much, Meno. I really appreciate it. No uh, informing the students. We have some students here, of course, in in the in the room, um, but there are also some students following uh, the live stream. So I will hope it was 
uh, very helpful for them as well and maybe gives them the interest and motivation to to do their exchange in the Netherlands. Um, now we're going to do the students from Mexico. Um, each of you guys are going to present your own your own parts. Um, Valeria, I have yours. Maybe we can start with yours then, if you're okay with it. Not a problem. Okay. Let me open it real quick, and then we can start with yours. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, um, my name is Valeria. I have two years old. And well, I'm going to talk about the Mexican influence in the world uh, in the entertainment aspect, uh, such as music, uh, movies, or celebrities. Um, Maybe uh, you know something about what I'm going to talk about, but if you're not, well, at least you already know a little more about Mexico. Um, so can you change this slide, please? Uh, well, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the music, um, or well, the most recognized Mexican music in the world. Um, the first song is Besame Mucho by Consuelo Velasquez. Um, in 1916. It's a very famous song and I think the most famous song in Mexico. And it has like about 20, no, sorry, 1,000 different versions and that it has been translated in 20 languages. And among them, uh, some of the most outstanding performers are the Beatles, Frank Sinatra, uh, Andrea Bocelli and Latin Cole, just to mention a few. The second one is Cielito Lindo by Quirino Mendoza y Cortez in 1882. And the last one is El Mariachi by Papa Correnteria, uh, which is a very famous song because, uh, well, it was performed by Antonio Banderas in a movie called Desperado in 1995. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you change the slide, please? Okay. Um, okay. There are uh, three film directors and uh, very famous in Hollywood. Um, it's impressive for me because they have directed a lot of movies in Hollywood, and they are, they are Mexican. So, um, well. It's Alfonso Cuarón, Guillermo del Toro, and Alejandro González Iñárritu. Um, can you change this slide, please? Thank you. Um, well, a, these are some movies that they have directed. And in the case of Cuarón, uh, Roma and Gravity, I don't know if some of you are I've seen that movies or something like that, but um, at this moment, Roma is the most Mexican famous movie in the world. And it has been nominated in different awards, uh, won many, even has won three Oscars, I think. Um, in the case of uh, Guillermo del Toro, The Shape of Water, of the Pan's Labyrinth. Um, and Alejandro González Iñárritu directed Berman and The Revenant. And yeah. So can you change the slide, please? Thank you. And finally, 
uh, we have some celebrities, um, Mexicans in Hollywood. Um, I think you know Salma Hayek because um, she has acted in From Just Till Down, uh, Eternals from Marvel Studios, um, or House of Gucci. Uh, Diego Luna uh, in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, or Elysium. Uh, we have Diego Boneta too, and uh, Rock of Age, and Before I Fall. Um, there are some examples. And last one is Joaquin Cosillo, who has been in Suicide Squad. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Valeria. Really appreciate it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we can go next. Anna Karen or Karen can go after as well. Uh, I can go if you want. Yes. To. Oh, perfect. Mm, can you see it? Yes. Okay, I'm going to talk about, about, well, I think it's my favorite part of Mexico, but it's the astronomy, and I think everyone that comes to Mexico loves our food. So let's start. Well, our origins, um, uh, it came from pre-Hispanic origins with a large number of dishes that it's based on corn, and other ingredients like chili, beans, pumpkins, avocado, tomato, cocoa, nopal. And because we didn't have like beef, uh, we used uh, rabbit meat, armadillo, and turkey. But then when the Spanish came to Mexico, well, we also have like uh, more variety of ingredients. So it was like helpful for us. It's like a mixture of the ingredients that came from Europe and the ingredients that we already have here in Mexico. And uh, well, I'm gonna explain a little bit this um, map that is a little bit confusing because it has like a lot of dishes from Mexico, but it's a little bit complex because all our dishes are based on corn, but we can also make a lot of things with corn. Uh, for example, it says uh, masa de maíz, which is, well, made of corn, and with it you can eat the elotes or esquites. <laughs> um, we also have sopes, guaraches, lacoyos, gorditas, that is like um, a tortilla with some meat and so you have to try it. I'm going to explain that a little bit more, but you have to try them, all of these dishes that appear here. Uh, and with the tortilla, we can also make uh, tostadas, enchiladas, flautas. Uh, we also, it's pretty common here to uh, have breakfast with chilaquiles, that it's like a fried tortilla, but in pieces like this, that it's called totopos, uh, with a sauce, like chili sauce. And we also put on it um, cream, cheese, and you can eat it with eggs or with uh, chicken. Uh, because of that mixture, we have a lot of dishes and like uh, we have also known as, uh, we eat a lot of bread and our most famous bread is, uh, I don't know how to say in English, pan de muerto, bread of <laughs> dead, I don't know, but it's not made of dead. <laughs> if you translate it, it sounds kind of weird, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it has its name because the form of the bread, like here you have this form, it is said that it's the bones of something. We did it on uh, Dia de Muertos. Um, well, we have more dishes. We are also known uh, for the tacos, but 
uh, tacos are eaten in the whole country and they are made of many different kind of uh, meat. For example, on the north uh, and maybe on the coast, uh, there are tacos that are made of fish or uh, yeah, fishes. Um, but in the center of the country, we can uh, have tacos like made of beef or um, um, uh, how do you say it? Um, cerdo. Uh, it's uh, pork, right? Yeah. But because we have a lot of variety of tacos, I'm just going to focus on Morelos. I'm just going to explain a little bit our gastronomy here in Morelos. And uh, Morelos is this little state of Mexico, but we have our own dishes. As other states of Mexico, they have like some uh, dishes that are uh, eaten like the most in there. Here in Morelos, well, you can uh, find like in every part, Tacos acorazados, that it has, it is the tortilla, um, red rice, that is rice uh, made of, with tomato sauce. And you can also put it on the top, like uh, mole or uh, chili or milanesa, that is, that can be made of chicken or uh, beef. And um, well, in a uh, part of Morelos, and uh, there is a place called Jega Pixla, and there they made like this salty meat, but it's so delicious, and it's pretty common in here to hear cecina de Jega Pixla. That it's cecina, but when it comes with the part Jega Pixla, is because it's going to be uh, more delicious because it came from the origin and place where it came. Uh, well, it's salty meat. We can also eat it with frijoles or cebollitas or onions, but they are small and they are like um, cooked that it, it makes them like, well, the flavor is delicious. And you can also eat it with uh, your sauce or with cream. And tip for you, Mano, if someone tells you that it's not spicy, don't believe them because maybe it's going to be spicy. Uh, all our food, we can, we put in uh, some spicy, some chili, because for us it's pretty common to eat spicy things. So I don't know if you eat spicy things, but for us it's pretty common and we like it. We love spicy food. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, right now I'm already hungry, please, but please continue. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> We're gonna end up all uh, hungry. <laughs> Uh, well, um, this is just the Cecina de Capixla and Tacos Acorazados are the most common dishes in here, but we can also eat as most of other parts of Mexico. We eat uh, tacos al pastor. Uh, maybe you can, you have seen this, uh, these tacos because I think that they are the most common tacos of Mexico that they are cooked in a, um, like in a big, in a, like in a shape of um, un rombo. <laughs> um, well, it's served like this, but they are really delicious. If you come here, you have to try them. Tamales and chilaquiles are um, also very common here to have it as breakfast. Uh, well, chilaquiles more as breakfast. That I will, I already told you that it's uh, tortilla, fried tortilla with cream cheese. And well, here it has chicken, but you can also eat it uh, without chicken or with uh, fried eggs and, and tamales. And you can also try um, some Mexican like candies. Uh, it has no brand because it's like the candies that are made of the people from here, like they are very regional candies, uh, like uh, obleas, 
eh, palanquetas that are that it's like um well it's it's like this um it has like uh, caramel and cacahuate i don't know if it's can be translated yeah i think it's uh, peanuts right yeah it's like uh uh caramel peanut yeah. uh bar something like that but it's like pretty common here like a sack candy but it's um hard to buy <laughs> um well that's all if you want to uh know more about our gastronomy it's always in corn you can also find uh, uh tacos that it's like the meat in the tortilla flautas that I, that it's meat but with tortilla roll um enchiladas that it's uh, the tortilla roll with meat but with sauce but it has a lot of different names but it's based on tortilla or in corn but it's pretty delicious and you have to try them all <laughs> i have one question for you yeah tell me it's possible um you would disappoint me if you're telling me that you haven't taste all of this separately have you uh I haven't tried tortas ahogadas uh, because it's like um, torta, like this dish. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the bread. Yeah. Uh, it has meat inside, and it has uh, like uh, chili red sauce. Mm -hmm. But I haven't tried it because they told me that the best. Uh, tortas ahogadas that you can try are made of uh, are made in Michoacan and I haven't been to Michoacan and here in Morelos I don't know where where they sell it so I haven't tried it that's the problem maybe for you uh, if you come here in Mexico because most of people there are going to tell you know if you try the I don't know birria you have to go to this state because in this state they have the best birria um, and because they have told me Uh, for example, in Tasco, I think uh, a kind of pozole, they say that it's the best pozole you can try. So they told you you have to go there to try the best pozole. You have to go to Baja California to try the best uh, tacos uh, that are made of fish, for example. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, for me, I, I haven't tried uh, tortas ahogadas, but the other ones, uh, yeah, I have tried them. Um, got me. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have tried them all. Wow. Uh, sopa de lima. I I haven't tried them. Yeah, but from this slide, I think I have yeah, tried yeah. all. Okay. And as a snack, you have to try. Uh, without excuse, elotes or esquites. Yeah. Because in the center of Cuernavaca, you can find a lot of um places where you can find uh, elotes or skittles and we have also like a joke here in mexico that when we when you go to buy uh, elotes or skittles the some people tell you with chili that it's spicy or that it's not spicy it's the only um it's the only place that you can find non-spicy chili Well, for me, because I have tried a lot this with the non-spicy chili, and I can tell you that it's not spicy for me, but I don't know if for you it's spicy. And I don't know if Brighton have heard this, uh, this like, joke, yeah. like... I've, I've heard it many times, but you get, you get used to the spiciness, so it's, uh, and for the, the elotes, it's not, it's okay, not it's not too, yeah. it's not too spicy, no. No. Thank you. Are you, yeah. you finished? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anna Karen. Sure. Very much appreciate it. I'm going to share uh, Karen's presentation and then you can uh, start. Let's see how I can make this. Well, I will talk about the Mexican holidays. 
And can you pass the last slide, please? Uh, well, the first day that we have is the uh, Dia de Reyes. This is different from there, I think, because this is like a religious festival that we have here. It celebrated in January 6th and commemorate, commemorate the arrival to the, of the magic to the lamb to the worship of baby Jesus. And um, here in Mexico, we have like this uh, tradition to eat the rosca. It's like a bread with some fruit in and with sugar. And inside we have like some plastic dolls that represent the baby Jesus. And we have the tradition that when, if you eat that piece of rosca that you have and you have the baby, you need to put the tamales from another festivity. Uh, can you change the slide please? And this is the other festivity. Uh, this is a uh, celebrate um, on February too. And we have uh, the person who has a, a doll need to put the, or do the party and put the tamales or, and do everything. Uh, we usually, uh, the persons uh, buy a, like a um, figure of the child Jesus to bless. And they, go, when, and they go to the church and they usually stay there all day. <laughs> Um, to our routine, and uh, we eat a uh, tole usually in that occasion and tamales. Uh, can you change, please? Another day that we celebrate here, well, here in Mexico, we celebrate like everything. <laughs> and we celebrate also the Cinco de Mayo or the, the Battle of Puebla, I think. Uh, that is, is uh, I don't know how to say. Um, it's when the Mexican face of the face of French uh, who try to invite here, um, and we usually only we celebrate with dancing or with some party. It's like the it's really simple what we do. We usually eat um, maybe some pozole or tacos or whatever uh, the family and friends want to do. It's similar to the Independence Day, but in the Independence Day, it's big. Yeah. Uh, can you change, please? Ah, oh, well, uh, this is Independence Day. Uh, we celebrate the 16th uh, here in Mexico, but we get around in family together, and we celebrate that night, the 15th, and we eat like everything that we can. We usually go from pozole and tacos and, and I don't know, we usually eat a lot of things in our parties and we drink a lot of things. Also, we have like the horchata, the water of horchata and the Jamaica. And but we also have like this, the tequila or stuff like that, that we usually do, uh, drink in our parties. Uh, well, uh, the most important thing here is that a lot of uh, people uh, get around the Zócalo in, the, in each city and they have like El Grito that it's like the most important thing to do there. And that's all, what, uh, well, so in some places we have like um, military party and traditional food and mariachi music or uh, fireworks and it's really, really fun. <laughs> Can you change the other, please? We have also the posadas. This is like a tradition thing to do in December. It's, it uh, began in the 16th and ending the 24th, I think. And we usually get around uh, the families and the friends in the house and we break like a piñata. And we usually sing or do our thing of prayed or and, and also we eat atole and tamales and whatever the, the, the person who received us in their house give us. Mm, then is the Noche Buena, that is the next slide. Uh, here in Mexico, we um, have like a lot of um, religion, religion uh, parties. 
and this is one of them and we celebrate here all in family some person go to the church and then another person stay at home and have dinner with with their families we usually here eat romeritos mole and sometimes we usually eat turkey or uh, some salad and we um, stay into, into well, to I don't. Can you change, please? Yes. The other one that is more important for us is El Día de Muertos. Uh, this is the this is like the best party for us, or for me at least. This is really a spectacular uh, party. Can you change the slide, please? <laughs> The, the tradition takes place on the November 1 and 2 of each year that the, we celebrate. Um, the first one is the day of all the saints, I think it is, uh, when we celebrate like all the uh, grown-ups. But the second one, uh, it's the day when we celebrate to the um, little ones. Um, we usually uh, honoring the showing respect to the dead as a Mexican custom that has been maintained as a base, as a basis done from general to generation. Um, can you change this slide, please? Oh yeah, uh, this is a mixture between the Cat Catholic rituals both from the Spain from Spain and the commemoration of the day that the of the day that the indigenous people carry out in the pre-Hispanic times. Can you change it, please? We usually have the offrendas or the offerings that they have, like a flower of sempasuchil, um, crab paper, paper, sugar, sugar schools, bread. Uh, the bread and some dishes that they are important for the person who is who died in this year. Uh, here in Cuernavaca, um, we celebrate this, especially in the little towns like Ocotepec. Uh, we usually the house open the doors for all the guests center and see the ofrenda and they usually give us like some coffee and bread to eat and see the ofrenda. Um, some persons give us like coffee that is the that always give us, but some other persons give uh, tacos or a lot of food. Uh, in some places there are like only the ofrenda, but in other places there uh, put some music also or do the party more bigger. Uh, can you change it, please? Uh, this is like an example of a friend here. Uh, we put the candles and the uh, picture of the person that we want to have the of the friend, and we put like everything that the person likes or liked, and like the food that we eat or the or what they drink. And in some places, they try to put like the body there. They simulate the body with the t-shirt and the shoes and the things that the person use. Can you change it, please? Okay. And this is like another um, form to celebrate that it's when the people go to the cemetery and they uh, decorate the, the place. They usually uh, bring uh, some flowers and some candles and sometimes the family uh, stay to eat there. And I think that's all what I can say about this, these celebrations. Next slide. Oh, I forget about this. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> uh, we have the culture her heritage. I don't know if, if it's said like that, uh, but it has been declared by the by, since 2008 the uh, UNESCO uh, because this is like a super important party for us that has a really great meaningful meaning. 
and I think that's Thank yes, thank you very much, Kyle. I really appreciate it for uh, Manu as well. Thank you. I um, wrote them all down. To be honest, really. <laughs> so I already know a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have a few minutes left um, for some questions, or if you guys want to mention something, uh, maybe Julia has some questions as well. Well, I don't have a question, but I definitely. Um, big on mobilization for students. Um, I worked for 33 years moving students from Canada to Mexico, Spain, and Germany, and another country. So uh, we visit Japan and uh, so another countries that the university has an agreement. So as a linguist, uh, which it is my studies, I would like to recommend the students to really visit countries where they can uh, learn about the culture uh, more than the language. We think that uh, learning a language will help us uh, to survive in another culture. And we prove that this, I mean, you can tell us that, Brighton, that is sometimes way more that we can learn about the countries that we visit. Uh, three things that I would like to, to recommend for you is just, uh, as Manu say, let's uh, learn a few things. People feel very good when you say good morning in their own language or buenos dias or, um, uh, sayonara and uh, good night, you know, that when people speak another language, they feel comfortable with you and they feel welcome. So it's very good, you know, that you, you start the interest of people trying to communicate with you. The second is um, to try, and that I recommend to my students and I will recommend to everybody, when you speak another language, try to slow down and breathe. Speaking faster doesn't mean that you are communicating better. So if you speak slow and clear, then people will try to engage a little more with you because sometimes we don't understand. And that goes for the nationals or the foreigners or the Mexicans welcome the foreigners speaking Spanish clearly, properly, and remember sometimes the expressions that you use, they, they haven't done those in the university. So help them to learn that way, you know? And um, secondly, it's always positive to, um, or thirdly, that's the last one, it's always positive to clarify things is you don't understand with friends, with your co-workers, and if you are in a co-op program, or with your professors, always clarify. Uh, we welcome that when the students don't understand and they want to know for sure what do they have to do. Don't go later with an excuse that you didn't understood what the homework was supposed to be about it, right? And uh, don't use translators that's the worst thing you can use. The translators make you say things that are horrible, you know, and so trying to find the ways. We have expressions. I just read in the websites of the Spanish school in Uninter, um, ahorita, the means of the word ahorita, you know, don't take by granted that means right now. Uh, clarify ahorita, tomorrow, later, never, what is happening, right? Part of learning the culture. I think that going to another country and study is something that enriches the students' uh, life and the professional life too. Uh, why do I pick on Inter for so long? That's because I think we can find everything that we need for the students to submerge and to emerge in the study of the language and the culture. Uh, the support that you get with the excursions, with the mini classes, with the courses, uh, with the club amigo, where you can make friends. I found that enriched the, the experience that my students have. And I'm very happy that we chose an inter in the middle of the country, accessible to all the cities too. And um, we have cities that you may don't get in the train in 45 minutes like in Europe, but you can take a weekend and you can really see the diversity of culture that we have in Mexico. So Mano, welcome you to Mexico. And probably I will meet you when I get back in Brighton. I will say 
see you later, probably in Curaçao, in Holland, <laughs> or probably in Mexico, or if you want to come and visit us in Canada. Oh, thank sure. Thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you, Julia. Um, just like Julia said, the manual for you as well, Aurita, it means, it was for me as well an uh, experience when I got here. Aurita means, so ahora means right now, but Aurita can mean later, tomorrow, in two weeks, in three weeks, in a year. So usually when I, I met my, some of the Mexican students here, they would say, well, we'll go do something um, or I'll come and pick you up at ahorita. And then I would think they would come right now, but they could come in two hours, they could come in three hours. It could be the next day even. So it's a good tip for you <laughs> for when you come here to, to know that. Um, if you guys have any questions or want things you wanna suggest or tips or, Anything else you guys can ask them now. And then later, um, I also got a message that we, they want to do a, a picture, like a screenshot together, and then so they can post it later, I think. Yes, Ana Karen, you wanted to? Uh, I wanted to talk, Manu, because uh, I think that a little bit, well, a big difference uh, from Mexico to, I think, the whole Europe, uh, it's that we are not too punctual. It's like common for us to arrive late to almost everything. <laughs> so don't worry if you, you're trying to hang out with friends and they arrive late because it's, it's common. It's not that good, but it's common. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Valeria, you want to say something? Yeah, also I want to add that if you come here in Mexico, you're gonna have the best parties of your life, I think. Uh, I mean, we have the best music, I think. It's like so cool music because it's like so funny and things like that. So uh, the people is kind and they're gonna receive you so well. So yeah. <laughs> and how about the city, Cuenavaca? Could you tell me some more about that? About what? About the city. Cuernavaca? Oh, it's Cuernavaca, it's a little state, but the, the people and the places are so beautiful. So, okay. You, and it's near from Mexico City, so you can travel in bus. It's an hour, I think. So you can do a lot of things here. And if you want, if, and if you don't want to stay in Cuernavaca, to Acapulco and the beach near from Cuernavaca or Mexico City or something like that. Okay, uh, well, thank you. I saw that uh, Cuernavaca wasn't like that close to the sea, or is it? Yeah, it's kind of in the middle of Mexico City, right? So, I mean, the closest beach, I think, is Acapulco, right? Yeah. It's about three, two to three hours with the with the car, maybe with the bus is a bit longer, but it's uh, the closest coast you can, you can get, yeah. That's also one thing that I get, I must have get used to uh, the times. Uh, I mean, like uh, here in the Netherlands, everything is so close and in Mexico, it isn't. So I have to get used to that, but also thanks for the tips. Uh, also, uh, Julia, uh, thanks for the tips as well. Uh, I am very excited to go to Mexico in August until January. So yeah, I'll give it a oh, go. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna have you're gonna have a good time here. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, sure of that. A lot of a lot of people uh, in the Netherlands are scared eventually of Mexico. You know that Brighton. Uh, yeah, um, I've experienced that as well. Everybody has an ID, like the 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 drugs, the cartels, etc. Um, but uh, no, uh, I, I so it's not that common in here. <laughs> <laughs> no. If I have to tell you my from my own experience here, um, I had the same thing as well. I have. Uh, so my mother already came to Mexico, but she was younger. So she already knew she was okay with me coming here. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of my, some of my friends and my uncles and aunts and people, I, some older people that I knew, they were like, when you go to Mexico, you have to be, you have to be careful, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but from my experience here, there was no moment where I felt I was in danger. 
Um, of course, you need to have some common sense. So if there are places that they tell you don't go there, then don't go there. But overall, I've it's it's been a completely different experience from what people have told me. You know, um, people are very nice here. The weather is is amazing. The food is great. So, um, and also the students here, they will kind of guide you as well. You know, you'll meet some of the students here.